Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to create a paper mache sculpture. You're going to start by using newspaper, tape, and cardboard. Then you're going to be adding uh, paper mache paste and newspaper. And then you're going to be adding paint decorations to create a realistic and very high quality paper mache sculpture. Materials for the first step include several pieces of sketchbook paper, a pencil with an eraser, and visual resources. You can look off your Chromebook of images that you've collected of your specific an animal and several angles. I printed off some images, but you're going to be looking on your Chromebooks to find several different images of the animal that you're choosing. These should be several different angles. I'm going to start with loose, soft marks to draw my drawing. Again, think about simple lines and simple shapes. For example, the head, neck, and body are just kind of ovals and cylinders. Um, I'm doing drawing really soft and really light. I'm making a lot of quick light marks and I'm going back with darker, heavier marks as I decide to make decisions. I'm not erasing yet, I'm just adding a lot of different marks and adding more pressure and marking heavier as I go. Once I have the basic silhouette or outline of my drawing, I'm going back in here and adding a little bit darker of a contour line and also, also kind of defining where some of the different patterns and colors of the loon are. Um, for this uh, angle of the loon, you're going to have a little bit of a white decal on the neck and kind of under um, the stomach and kind of lighter areas under the wing. So I've kind of indicated that and then again, I'm going with some darker, heavier contour lines around the outside, adding suggestion of feathers and other texture um, as I make decisions and draw a little bit darker. Um, so now I'm starting to add some values and shading. This is secondary and not as important, but I would recommend you do it if you have time. Um, loons have two primary colors, white and black. So I'm indicating the spots on the neck and the indicate uh, the marks on the stomach and under the wing with value. Again, value is a degrees or various degrees of lightness and darkness. Um, so I'm adding various lines and patterns and texture um, to suggest that darkness and lightness. Some areas of the wing get a little bit lighter kind of towards the edge of the feathers. So I'm adding lighter pressure there and then darker pressure as I go um, in other areas. As you're working, be sure to erase lines you don't need. Now that I've completed one drawing, I'm gonna work on at least two more. This next drawing is a different angle. So the first one, I start with a side angle. Now I'm going from a top view or kind of like um, a dorsal view of the wingspan. So I use a dividing line in half, which is a line of symmetry, and then I add my ovals and my cylinders, and then start with the wingspan. Try to make the wings as equal as possible. I'm doing some different proportional lines um, horizontally across my page to give me an indicator of where the wings should, should kind of match up and start. Um, again, you can see from, from my drawing here, it's not perfect, uh, but you do want to just get the best representation you can. Um, the better the drawing, uh, the better the sculpture will be. So again, as always, I'm starting with a lot of soft light marks. Once I have a lot of soft light marks, I'm going to start making decisions with darker lines, heavier lines, and, um, and more, more lines here. I'm also kind of doing what I did before and indicating where certain patterns of the loon's uh, spots are. There are some broader, bigger circles um, on the kind of the shoulders of the loon and some really smaller dots along the wing and directly the back. So I didn't spend a ton of time filling those in really with a lot of detail. I'm just doing some suggestions of that um, and I can go back and add darker pressure later on or more details later on. Now I'm adding darker pressure, again using a um, variety of lines with proximity, how close the lines are together, and also the pressure going on multiple times. Uh, like I said before, a lot of the loon's wings have a lighter tip on the edges and they get a little bit darker as they go um, towards the front or the top. So I'm adding different pressures throughout that and I'm kind of making my pencil in the or marking with the pencil in the direction of the feathers to help suggest that texture. So I'm finishing up the drawing with a rich clean contour line that's bold and relatively thick to help define, define all those areas of value and shading and other details that I might have lost um, in my work. Once I've completed the contour line of this drawing, I'm pretty much done, ready to move on to my next drawing. For this drawing, I'm focusing on the head. I recommend you do at least two um, full body drawings of your uh, flying creature and then focus on the head. 
Again, I'm using a lot of simple lines. I'm doing some ovals, some triangles, and some rough kind of cylinders or rectangles to find the neck, head, and the beak. And then after I kind of got them in position with really light, soft marks, I'm going back and choosing the lines that I need with a little bit darker, a little bit heavier mark, um, and kind of working on those spots. Just a small, subtle change can make a big difference. Getting the eye, the beak, and all those different spots takes some time. So go back, take your time, and don't rush. Again, a lot of times you don't make the best mark on the first mark. So take your time and do several multiple lines. Now that I've got a rough proximity of lines that I want, I'm going back with a bold, darker, heavier line, defining the beak, the eyes, and around the areas of the head. And then I'm going to be um, uh, showing the details of the neck um, and the different uh, vertical patterns that those white lines indicate um, underneath the chin and the neck of the loon. I'm next going to start adding some values and shading. Again, use value with a variety of pressure and proximity. So I'm going to go over this a couple times and I'm going to kind of shade in one single direction for the first time and then I'll go back and shade in a different direction for the second time. Once you fill in all of your areas, you're probably gonna have to go back and erase lines with a pencil um, or erase lines with a eraser and then go back with a pencil like I'm doing here and add a, another crisp, darker line to help really define where those things start and where those things stop. Um, you might not do a head for your drawing. There might be another feature of your animal that is really distinct. Um, it could be the tail. It could be just a really detail in the feather. It could be um, uh, the beak or the, the foot. Again, we're really trying to define our creature and focus on what is unique. And for the loon, I think that is um, the head. For the second step, materials you'll need are the drawings that you've done. You've done, should have done at least three, maybe up to five. You're going to need masking tape as well as several pieces of newspaper. Once you've completed your drawings, you're going to take a piece of newspaper and fold it. You're then going to crumple it up several times to make the paper loose and flexible. And you're going to be taking small amounts of tape, not a lot, to secure and hold the newspaper together. Right now, I'm working on the body of my bird and trying to create an oval-like shape. Again, use just enough tape to hold it in place. Don't cover your entire newspaper with tape. Here's a, here's a non-example. Do not do this. Do not just take your roll of tape and wrap it aimlessly around over and over again. That's going to not be a good life choice. Next, I'm going to be working on the head and the neck. Notice how I tore the piece of paper in half because it's going to be significantly smaller. And I'm going to leave a little bit of extra newspaper, not so tight for the head, and then wrap the tape a little bit tighter to make a narrower or smaller neck. That way I have a clear distinction between the head and the neck of my bird. Once you have both those assembled, I would attach them together with several pieces of tape. Again, don't put a lot of tape down so it's easily to move and change later on. To create the beak, use a little bit of tape and newspaper, or you could also use cardboard. My beak's not too large, so it's easily done with newspaper and tape. With your drawings, you're also going to need a placemat, box cutter, masking tape, pencil, as well as cardboard. Start by laying down your cardboard and lightly sketching the drawing of your bird's wing. When you're sketching, you want to do a lot of soft, light marks and then go back with a heavier contour line. Remember, your bird's wingspan of one wing is usually about the same length of the body. Next, lay down the placemat, take your box cutter, make sure it's locked in place the right length, and um, secure the cardboard with your hand. Again, notice how my hand is following my box cutter behind, not in the direction that I'm going. Add a lot of pressure down so the plate cuts through the cardboard and then remove the excess cardboard that you no longer need. I would then take another piece of cardboard, very carefully trace the first wing so you can create an identical second wing. Attach both wings together by laying it next to the body of your bird where you want it to go and use again small amounts of tape. We want to just secure them in place to make sure that they're how we want them before we cover and really strongly secure our cardboard wings to our newspaper body. Make sure you cover both sides and again just enough so it's secure. Now I'm taking a piece of cardboard and creating the tail or the feet of my bird. When I'm drawing I'm using again soft light marks and then going back with heavier darker marks. Then I'm using a box cutter again placing on a placemat like I've done before 
and cutting out and removing the excess cardboard. Your next step is to take the cardboard piece and attach it to the body, which is the newspaper. I would tape it similar to, a, to as you did with the wings. Again, a little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom to secure it in place. If you need to add a little bit of volume or depth by adding newspaper to that cardboard piece, that helps to give it a little bit more depth. Once you're confident you have everything in place exactly as you want it, you're gonna cover your entire creature with tape. You're gonna make sure that you have no exposed newspaper anywhere visible on your creature. So you're carefully and thoughtfully adding tape. Notice how I'm going in several different angles. Sometimes I'm going vertical, sometimes I'm going horizontal. If you're working on um, the body, just make sure there's no tape visible. If you're working on where cardboard connects to the body, try to really re-secure that in several different ways, angles, and positions. So I'm using a cross hatch pattern and other angles to really secure that tape to the cardboard. What you don't need to do is cover the whole cardboard with tape. That is unnecessary. So the tape that I'm putting on the cardboard is just to secure the wings and the tail to the body. So again, no visible newspaper, all covered in tape. The next set of materials you will need is going to be your paper mache creature, newspaper laid out at your workstation, paper mache paste, as well as various sizes of newspaper pre-torn, small to large. First, take a piece of newspaper, put it in the paper mache paste, and let it hover over the container, letting it drip down. Use your hand to wipe away the excess paste. Next, apply the piece of newspaper on your creature. I usually start with the wing because it's the easiest. Notice how my rectangular pieces are starting at the top and then wrapping around the edge to the other side. When you're applying it to the top and it's wrapping around at their side, really make sure there's not flaps or folds. Really make sure it's flat against the cardboard. You do want the newspaper to overlap itself, but you don't want to have a lot of folds, flaps, and gaps. Once you've filled the entire wing, massage or smooth it out to make sure there's no wrinkles, folds, or flaps coming up off the texture of the cardboard. Do the same step for the other wing as well. Again, I'm overlapping the newspaper, making sure that there's no gaps where visible cardboard is, and really going to go back and smooth down the surface so there's no textures or patterns. I'm going to do the same process on the body. As you're working the body, you might change the size of the newspaper strips that you're using. Could be larger pieces on broad areas like the chest or the main part of the body, smaller pieces for the tail, feet, neck, head, or beak. So use the variety of pieces of newspaper sizes depending on the part of the creature that you're working on. Once you have your entire creature covered in paper mache paste newspaper, go back and make sure there's no gaps and smooth out all of the wet newspaper. You wanna make sure there's no wrinkles, folds, or flaps of texture. Your next step is to grab several different size paintbrushes, a cup of water to clean your brush, and the paint colors you need. Be sure to lay newspaper out on your table to help with cleanup. When you're decorating your sculpture, you wanna start with a base coat, which is the, uh, the majority of your project. For this one, I would recommend black, for the majority of the areas on the back and the head. Underneath, however, on the stomach and the wings, I would have chose white. Black and other really dark colors are really dominant and it's difficult to get white or lighter colors on top. So keep that in mind and be strategic. If you're gonna be decorating any areas with a warm, lighter color like yellow, orange, or red, I'd recommend you do one coat of yellow or white first and then do your yellow, orange, or red on top so it's more solid and opaque. If you have any questions, please let me know.